Has anyone wrongfully assumed you were dumb and in the process made themselves look really dumb? What's your story? Story 1. When I was in 8th grade, we just learned about the seasons and Earth's rotation and all that. To my surprise, my teacher taught us that the Earth is actually closest to the sun during winter. But it's cold because of the tilt on the axis. Not because of proximity to the sun. The tilt determines the seasons. And then soon after that I went to math class and my math teacher said something about how it was freezing because we are so far from the sun. And of course I piped up to tell him he was wrong according to what Mr. Science teacher had just taught us. My math teacher asterisk went off asterisk ripping into me so hard in front of the class. It was lighthearted. He was known for being funny and making fun of kids all the time. Him and I were going back and forth for a while and I specifically remember him saying, Oh yeah, because when I'm cold, I move asterisk away asterisk from the fire. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I kept arguing, no, no, it's because of the Earth's tilt. And so finally, he googled it and I was right. He at least gave me credit and admitted he was wrong after that lol. Story 2. A Dutch couple visited my workplace, tourist visitor center, and insisted that the French translation on our map was wrong. The reasoning was that Groenland shouldn't be there because it was the Dutch word for Greenland, not the French one. I told them that Groenland was also the French translation, to which they chided back, and how would you know? I'm bilingual. I speak French. I informed, clearly, not very well, they insisted, then proceeded to ask for the Wi-Fi so they could use Google Translate. Well, I gave them the Wi-Fi, and to Google Translate, they went. Sure enough, Groenland. They didn't even apologize. They just said, I guess the map is correct then, and left. Assholes. Story 3. Didn't necessarily make anyone look dumb, but certainly made some people feel bad. I lived in Germany for a year after high school as part of an exchange program, and there were several times where I had to make phone calls. I had to call doctors, employers, program coordinators, etc. So I got fairly used to the whole telephone garb in German. I could speak pretty fluently on the phone, but since it's not my native language, I would of course make small grammatical errors and stuff like that. This led to the unfortunate situation where people would assume I was German when on the phone because I spoke well enough. But since I kept making mistakes, I was also stupid. People were quite rude to me over the phone, assuming that was due to the assumed stupidity. After revealing I was actually a foreigner, they always sounded so surprised and complimentary of my German, and were much more helpful and polite afterwards. Story 4. I used to work at a Courtyard Marriott Hotel, which is a hotel oriented for business people who have to up early and work late. You know, real workhorses and road warriors. The hotel was a sprawling five stories tall, with around 200 or so rooms. It was also right next to LAX, so we always got a lot of business people flying in thinking they were hot as shy because their company flew them out to do business in LA. Whatever. This one day, I'm working front desk, and it's kind of late, around midnight maybe, and one of our guests comes in kind of drunk and asks for me to reset his room key before he heads to his room because we always do them wrong. So I'm like, yeah, sure thing, not a problem. Have a good night. He comes back down five minutes later, visibly agitated, and says, what the heck, man? I thought I told you to remake my keys. Can you do your F-saking job right? And in the hospitality industry, you're not allowed to talk back, raise your voice, or really stand up for yourself. Your one and only goal is to make the guest feel welcomed. So, I apologize, take the blame and say it won't happen again, and make him an extra key. He snatches them from my hand and storms off to his room. Five minutes later, he comes back down again. What is wrong with you? Are you stupid? Are you wasting my time on purpose? I'm heading to my room and you better come up with working room keys. And he throws his keys at me. My manager sees this all happen and is like, you know what? Let me handle this. You deserve a break. I'm fuming, of course. I go to the break room and just pace, wondering what gives people the audacity to act like that. My manager eventually comes back. He enters the break room with a smile and clearly something to report. He says it, he was going to the wrong floor. His room was actually one floor up. He said he's sorry. I wish I could have seen his face. Story 5. When I worked as a cashier in a grocery store, people would always want to argue about their produce. They would bring up heads of iceberg lettuce and then argue with me that they were green cabbage or vice versa. I would always just smile, void the product, and then charge them for what they thought it was. The best was seeing people come back later pissed that their coleslaw didn't work. The best, though, was the sweet potato versus yam argument that I would have with people several times during the week leading up to Thanksgiving. Most of what we sell in the U.S. are sweet potatoes, though some sweet potatoes grown in one state, Louisiana, are the yam variety of the sweet potato. But people often call them yams and will fight you over it. Even though true yams are hard to find unless your store stocks stuff for Latin American customers. We did, but yams were rarely in stock and always more expensive than sweet potatoes. Anyway, sweet potatoes would go on sale for the holiday and people would buy lots of them. Every time I rang them up, 
I would get told that they were yams and that I was dumb for not knowing that. So I would void them and ring them up as yams for four times the price. When customers would want the sale price, I would kindly remind them that I had tried to give them the sale price, but that they had asked me to ring them up as yams instead. Story 6. Corporate trainer came to our offices to provide training. I popped into the room to say hello and see if she needed help. She was having trouble setting up the projector before the session. I started trying to help, but I'm not really savvy with projectors. She was getting frustrated with me as she assumed I was the IT dude, and obviously not a very good one. We eventually got it fixed, and I offered her a coffee. She was a bit rude to me by that stage. I got her one anyway. Fast forward to the session itself, and I introduced her to the room of 40 people and thanked her for coming. She realized I was the head of the division and was the one paying for her to be there. I felt very smug at that point. Story 7? This didn't happen to me, but to someone else. My stepmom used to be an occupational therapist and would help the elderly in the hospital. One patient she had to work with was Vietnamese, so he didn't know English. He came with his son, so my stepmom decided to ask him about his father. But her co-worker interrupted her, saying, I don't believe he speak English. This whole time the son hasn't said a word while my stepmom was working with his father. When they were done, the father and son left. And as soon as they were at the door, the son turned around and said, Remember. I don't speak English. The coworker was dumbfounded when he said that, and all my stepmom could do was laugh. Story 8. My wife and I were traveling with a couple we worked with in South Korea. We weren't best friends with them, but they were nice enough, so we rented a car and traveled around the island of Jeju. Now, this is a small island, and you could drive around it in four or five hours, but we were taking our time seeing the sights. The guy was a bit of a know-it-all, but they had been in Korea six months longer than us, so I always tools his advice. Anyways, I'm driving the car and we are trying to find the place that we want to eat. I say something like, we are going the right way. This guy responds with, no, we are going south. Trust me, I majored in geography. I look straight ahead into the, the setting sun and respond with weird we found the one place on earth where the sun sets in the south. Well, that cow him up for a while. Story 9. I'm currently a junior in college and a couple of weeks ago when the semester started dying down, I left the dorms to come back home and finish things out online. I also started working at the local grocery store as well. Around a week ago, as I was checking out two customers when they told me they wanted to pay 50 50ths with two cards. Our system requires us to manually enter the price, so I did. And the lovely gentleman told me my math was wrong and said he's a sophomore engineering student at a school nearby to help justify why he was correct. I respond, oh, cool. I'm actually a junior at, insert much, much better engineering school. What are you studying? While also pulling up a calculator and showing him he was wrong. Everyone always assumes the workers here are dumb, so it's always nice to show them otherwise. Story 10. I'm French and live in France, but I grew up in the UK and consider English to be like a mother tongue. When I was 17, I had to change schools, from a private one to a public one. And this was for personal reasons, but my new classmates assumed the reason was because my grades were too low, and I got kicked out. The private school had high standards. Anyway, it's the first day of school and we have English class. The teacher hands out a list of sentences we have to translate and asks us to compare translations with our neighbor. The first sentence is rather hard to translate from French, and the teacher, after having walked around and looked at our answers, announces that only one person in the class has got it right. We compare answers with our neighbors. The girl next to me sees my translation. How long has it been raining for? And she bursts out laughing. Has it been? Has it been? I've never heard that in my life. That is so stupid. And she makes fun of me for a good while to the other girl sitting next to her. Being new and also knowing that she was going to feel stupid in a couple of minutes, I didn't say anything. Sure enough, the teacher announces I was right, and my classmates quickly discovered that I was actually a fluent English speaker with excellent grades pretty much all around. It made making friends really hard, but I hope that girl learned her lesson to never make fun of someone without knowing the full story. Or never make fun of people ever. That would be better. Story 11. A director at work did this recently. We work with various agencies. He tried to rat me out in front of the other direction, and our boss by saying I wasn't providing services to two places, one which I claim I am. I told everyone why the one site didn't get any services. The site wasn't eligible for the services he was talking about. It was a Zoom meeting, so I asked to share my screen. I showed them the proof that this site wasn't eligible. I then asked why he thought they were, why he felt it upon himself to check in on my office's sites, and why he felt the need to make sure I was doing my job with he wasn't my supervisor, director, and didn't work in my office. Come to find out, he decided to check to see if they were getting their needs met because he had learned I also wasn't providing services at another site I claimed was getting services. I was easily able to prove that they indeed did get the services and he was talking to the wrong person. 
In the end, he looked like an peach who was overstepping and possibly trying to get me fired or steal our funding, and I looked competent and professional. People are still pissed at him for this and no longer believes anything he says. Story 12. The day after graduating from high school, my brother, who had just learned to drive a stick, manual transmission, took me to go look at cars. The very first one he drove, an old Ford Explorer, wouldn't shift into fifth gear, at which point I said to him, I don't think you should buy this one. Something's seriously wrong with it. He told me to shut up, asked me what I knew about cars, and immediately bought it. A week later, the transmission dropped. Me, the day the transmission dropped. What do I know about cars? Not much, but obviously more than you. It's been almost 20 years, and whenever he gets too full of himself, I remind him of that. Note, I still know almost nothing about cars, except they go vroom and get me places. I've never had a major repair like a bad transmission in a little over 15 years of driving and owning cars. Story 13. Once at a game night, someone made a comment about an aspect of languages. The comment isn't really important. The point is, they were vaguely wondering about a thing, and I answered the question. They had just met me and so tried to rib me by laughing and saying I was wrong. I said, no, pretty sure that's right, and this is why. He scoffed and said, it's not like you have a degree in languages or something. Everyone else immediately dissolved into giggles, as I informed him that actually I had just moved back from grad school after getting my second linguistics degree. The bright pink look on his face was wonderful. Story 14. I work at Starbucks, and I am a bilingual native Spanish speaker. Even though my English is not as good as my Spanish, it's pretty good. But some people think I have a speech impairment. One time I was talking with my coworkers and forgot a word in English. I just stuttered and honestly seemed pretty dumb at the moment. One of my coworkers laughed and started making fun of me. She was a transfer and didn't know I am a native Spanish speaker. A few minutes passed, and she was taking a drive through order, which had a Spanish speaker that didn't know much of English. She had a lot of trouble taking the order, and no one knew what she was saying. I immediately took over the order talking in fluent Spanish. Since that day, she keeps being hesitant to look me in the eyes. Story 15. Moved to a new city for work after graduating university. Figured since I was sticking around for a while, I'd check out some local bars for extra low-stress work. The hope was to work as a dishwasher for beer and meet people between dish loads. I actually pulled it off too. Score! Well, one of the cooks had a hate on for dishwashers and just kept bad-mouthing me every night. Calling me dumb, useless will never amount to anything. I really didn't care as him running his mouth didn't phase me while I made good money at my day job. Figured he was projecting more than anything. Finally, the main cook who I became good friends with overheard Jerkoff running his mouth again at me and told him all about my day job, graduating university, and only working for beer and meeting people. Once he heard all that, he never came back after that shift. Story 16. My sister-in-law used to make fun of my English all the time. Whenever I mispronounced something, she would start laughing and telling everyone, She's so cute. She can't pronounce this or that. I always considered her just a mean girl, trying to keep the attention to herself, but the English thing really bothered me. One day we were drinking and she started laughing at something I said, I lost it. I told her I speak three languages while she can barely speak English. We kept arguing until I said, fine, let's prove it. We took a mock-up English test online and I got a perfect score. She got eight twelfths. That was the last day she laughed at me edit. Spelling edit. Thank you for the awards. It was a sweet victory. I just like to share this story to remind people to be kind and patient with others. Speaking English doesn't mean you're smarter than everyone else. Edit. Wow, this blew up overnight. Some background for the story. I'm originally from Colombia, but now I live in Canada. I speak Spanish, English, and French. To everyone that said I tried learning a second language, but it's too hard, try again. It's worth it. And yes, it will take years and effort, but it will open your eyes to a whole new world. Story 17. When I was about five, six, I was asterisk obsessed asterisk with the Titanic. The ship, not the movie. Although all the ads around that time for home rentals probably got me interested in the first place. I knew every fact, every detail, every bit of trivia about that ship and its fateful voyage in 1912 for a few years there. Well, one summer, my family had a big get-together, as you do. One of my dad's uncles, my great-uncle, was there, who was an asterisk, huge asterisk thorn by all accounts. My dad hated him anyway. And he happened to discover I was interested in the RMS Titanic. So he decided to quiz me, try and make me look stupid. He asked, hey, exactly how long was the Titanic? According to my old man, I looked up, met my great uncle square in the eyes and deadpanned. 882 and a half feet, duh. Needless to say, my dad enjoyed that moment. Story 18. I was in a group project in high school and a classmate of mine who was a complete tool kept talking to me extra loudly and slowly. I was very shy. Still am a lot of the time, and it loosely translated to me not being intelligent, apparently. 
I didn't say much to him, let him go on about his business. We got up to the front of the classroom to present our stuff, and he hadn't bothered to read the information we submitted. Not only did he share incorrect information, but he became highly upset when I corrected him in front of the class. Bonus content. He plays in the NFL now. Not relevant. I just know someone that plays in the NFL. Story 19. While still enlisted in the army, I worked in the maintenance field. Basically, if it had moving parts, I knew a little bit about it. Now, every year, my unit goes on annual training. And this particular year, we got six brand new generators. Now the section they belonged to was headed by a sergeant who had over 15 years of service and knew his job inside and out, backwards and forwards, and then decided that I didn't know how to do my job. In his wisdom, he decided that the fuel cans for his new generators would be set next to said machines. All well and good until I told him they needed to be placed on a secondary containment to prevent fuel spilling on the ground. Because we can get in huge trouble for that. He disregarded what I said with some idiotic excuse, don't rightly remember what, and went on his way. So naturally, I reported the violation of orders to my superior. Within five minutes, there was impeach chewing and the fuel cans were put on a secondary containment. Story 20. I used to project manage train modifications. I was in charge of a particularly difficult door mod on a fleet of trains where the fleet director was an arsehole from the minute he realized he had to deal with a female project manager with waist-length blonde hair who barely looked 30. I was over 30 but looked younger. At the time, I was driving a large gray Volvo, but it was in getting some work done, so I took my fun car to work with me for the week. The fleet director commented on how he saw it in the car park and immediately knew the Barbie car was mine right in the middle of a project meeting with the train owners. Someone asked me what kind of car it was out of interest, and I told them it was a Peugeot 207 convertible, and he said, No, dear, that's a VW Beetle. It doesn't surprise me that you don't know cars. I said, well, I have it insured as a Peugeot, and I think they would let me know if I'm wrong, and I've owned the car for a while now, so I think I know what kind of car I own. I didn't want to embarrass him further, so I tried to continue with the meeting until we get to a coffee break, and he brings it up again. By now, a few people had been out for a cig break and seen the car, and it's obviously not a Beetle, so they looked awkward but didn't stand up for me. He starts to laugh that I don't know which kind of car I own, and I only have it because I wanted a pink car. I actually let my daughter choose it, but none of these men knew I had children because fudge em. So I take my car keys out and put them on the table and tell him to look at the Peugeot logo on them and to feel free to go and open the pink car with them and confirm who is right about the car I own. I wish I could say he backed down, but all he said was that there must have been two Barbie pink cars when he walked past the car park and he only saw the one which was a beetle. He really was a flipping idiot. Story 21. When I was working as a pharmacist assistant, people would always ask for the pharmacist because I was young and they assumed an assistant is an idiot, not like I studied or anything. One day in particular, an older lady was rude to me, saying she had to see only the pharmacist, so I called him and he heard her story out and she wanted some cold medicine and a Vit B injection. He told her, I'm a bit busy, but my assistant will gladly help you and he walked away. I got her the medicine, explained how to use it and gave her the shot, being as friendly as I would be with any other customer. She was so disgusted and kept muttering about me being disrespectful. I think the embarrassment was too much because I never saw her again. Hope she never treated someone like that again. Story 22. I'm an audio engineer for a few major record labels in a big music city. I'm also a woman, and this is an extremely male-dominated field. I'll get a lot of blind date sessions where I just get called in and don't know who I'm working with until I get there, and it can be the same on the client's end. I'll be the only person in the room sitting at the computer with the recording software up, and when they arrive, they'll ask, where's my engineer? When I say it's me, there's visible disappointment, and sometimes the clients will actually complain that they need someone else. The studio manager just assures them that they're in good hands, even though I've tried to do the same. They usually still aren't happy, but at that point realize it's either me or they don't record. After the first few minutes of recording, they ask if I take sessions outside of the studio, what my rates are, and what my number is so they can hire me for their sessions at other studios. They go from thinking I know nothing to saying I'm going to be their engineer within a matter of 10, 15 minutes. It gets tiring and annoying because it happens so often, but they don't realize when they walk in that I've been doing this for over 10 years and that I know what I'm doing. Story 23. Early 2000s, I was having to work out of town with another guy, but company only gave us one hotel room. I was in my 20s, he was probably in his 40s, and I knew he thought pretty highly of himself. He was looking at some stuff on a laptop while I was watching TV, and he asked me something like, Do you know if this VoIP thing is any good? I thought for a second and replied along the lines of, Well, I know they're growing, but I've never used Facebook Messenger or Skype or anything for that before, so I can't say from personal experience. At the time, that was true. I didn't even have a Facebook account. He kind of sighed and says, 
I'm not talking about Skype, I said VoIP. Then he gets this super condescending tone in his voice and says, Do you even have any idea what I'm talking about? I just kind of looked at him and cocked an eyebrow a little bit. And then I put on lecturing professor sort of tone and reply, VoIP, or V-O-I-P, is an acronym that stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. It's a generic term that can refer to any system that allows you to transmit audio over the internet and communicate with another person. Skype is built entirely to do that with video as well, and Facebook Messenger has a feature where that's an option. He just sort of blinked, and then quietly said, oh, and went back to his laptop. Story 24. I was arguing with someone over the delisting of wolves. It eventually led to the dude accusing me of blowing breathe out of my peach, said I needed to educate myself. So I sarcastically said, what exactly do I need to educate myself on? While uploading peer-reviewed studies and official government data that backed up everything I had said, I then commenced to follow up with, I'm studying wildlife biology and own a wildlife rescue. I specialize in wolves and coyotes. I wasn't really accused of blowing breathe out of my peach after that. In fact, the entire tone shifted. I guess they didn't want to admit that they looked like a tool. Story 25. One of my clients filed a frivolous lawsuit after I refused to give him free services or a refund for his dissatisfaction of a service he had absolutely no reason to be dissatisfied with. During the deposition, it became clear that both the client and his attorney made the mistake of assuming I was just a meathead. The attorney ended up so flustered that he lost his composure, insulted me, always a clear sign that the other person has literally no factual argument, and we had to recess. After he apologized, he asked a couple more questions and ended the deposition. Insurance ended up settling the claim for almost nothing, just to avoid civil trial. Story 26. It was more along the lines of underestimating me in sport. In high school PE, I was treated pretty badly by many classmates. I'm small, quiet, passive, and it made me an easy target. We were playing baseball one day, and it was my turn at the bat. They all scooted in real close, shouting stupid remarks. I bit my tongue and blasted that goddamn ball out of the field. I walked my way around the bases and tried to hide my smile. I had played some softball when I was younger and was fairly decent at it. And if I was pissed when I played, that ball would leave town. Worked pretty well for me that day. Story 27. My natural hair color is bleached blonde, if that helps set the scenario. I'm petite. Was told I should have been a model, but instead I decided to go into computer programming because that felt more like something I'd want to do. And I worked hard to become the coordinator for a fairly large brand's web services team in the late 90s through 2010. This included server maintenance and upgrades, data warehousing, programming, and creative content, all at my direction, and it was a blast. I used to go to tech conferences all the time, and particularly in the 90s, I was mistaken for a booth babe. God, I hope that's not still a thing. Other times, I would ask questions about products and the sales guys, because way back then it was always guys, would often ask me if my tech director was with me so they could bring him in on the discussion. It happened maybe 20% of the time back then, but it always shocked me. I'd then begin asking highly technical questions they couldn't really answer with the sheer goal of making them feel badly for making assumptions. Things have changed significantly in the past 15, 20 years. I see far more women representing the product teams, and nobody ever asks me about my IT director anymore. It probably helps that my position is on the badge I'm wearing, but that was the case 25 years ago as well. I'm glad to see better representation, and at least the conferences I attend there are no more booth babes. Story 28. My best friend and I were hanging out and wanted to watch a DVD on her family's Xbox. We got power, but no video or audio. I looked behind the TV and found the cat chewing on the AUX cable. He was noted for doing this. I reached behind the TV and blindly plugged everything back in from what I could see. Still nothing. Her brother comes home and she asks for his help. I explain I had plugged it all back in after the cat pulled them out, but still nothing. He tells me, with great authority, that I shouldn't have bothered because as a girl, I would never understand how the complexities of a game console worked. It was called an Xbox because only men have the X chromosome. It's been 20 years and I still remember the smug look on his face because only men have X chromosomes. You're an idiot and a chode, Matt. An idiot and a chode. Story 29. I was working in IT at an investment firm. A contractor, senior engineer, needed another person to work with, but was very demanding in who they'd work with. I was told to work with him. When my manager told him he'd be working with me, he looked over at me, looked back at the manager, and said I wouldn't do. He thought I couldn't hear the conversation in the distance, but I could totally hear it. He said, I require someone with at least a bachelor's from prestigious university, knows the company's code, and knows design patterns. My manager responded, I've got the perfect person for you. He pointed direct to me. The contractor said, 
Didn't you hear what I just said? I finally stood up and said, What about me makes you think I didn't go to prestigious university, know our code, or can't write a factory pattern? I could see the gears in his head finally begin to move as he paused. He walked off without saying a thing. Story 30. A group of college students from an obscure Christian cult stopped me asterisk during asterisk my run to evangelize to me. Unfortunately for them, I'm a PhD student in theology. They started asking me if I was familiar with certain things in the Bible, and I responded quoting chapter and verse, poking holes in their logic and asking follow-up questions. The poor girl obviously had a script to stick to because she did not engage any of my questions but just kept repeating that scripture clearly shows that their church is the only one in the world that actually knows the truth, even though I demonstrated why that makes no sense. Story 31. During the summer, I would work in retail to have money for textbooks. Back then, community college had a stigma as being for people who couldn't get into real college, and especially being the rightful place of minorities. The topic of school came up, and when I said I was in college, before I could even reply as to which one this white girl interrupts and says with an attitude, Oh, community college? She immediately deflated when I told her I attended a private college in New York, and then when she was asked about her schooling, awkwardly admitted she was a dropout. Edit. Also, I collect coins, and my father showed up one day with a really dirty and tarnished buffalo nickel and told me, with his usual attitude, that he was 100% right. It was a rare coin and insisted I evaluate it using my coin books. He got real mad when I told him I have 20 of these where I could actually read the date and advised his was only melt value. I guess he looked it up himself because I later found the coin left on a bookshelf. LPT, if anyone tries to sell you a Morgan silver dollar for any amount above the price of silver per ounce, they're very likely scamming you. There are only certain Morgans actually worth anything, and of those you should not buy them if they don't have any kind of reliable authentication. Also, a lot of Morgans these days are artificially toned, so don't spend a ton of money on a rainbow Morgan. Story 32. I had lived at an apartment complex for four years. I was always paying rent on time, adhering to the rules, etc. Had a few issues with them, like my water heater flooding, and them not compensating the damages. I had to pay a large gas bill that time, so I eventually went to move out. Then they wouldn't give me my deposit back. The lady in the office said I had to talk to my roommate and get it back from her. That should never be the case if you're not there via application, background check, the works. I paid the office my deposit, not my roommate. And I was there obviously way before her. Office lady talked down at me and even laughed at me as if this was the obvious thing. I'd never paid anything to my roommate and always worked through the office. So I had to go through the ring around and finally got in touch with the people over her and told them what happened. I got an email from office lady apologizing and saying that she'll have it returned to me ASAP. I got all my deposit back, and when I went to collect a package, family member didn't have my new address. It was a different person managing the complex, so I can only hope that she got fired. Story 33. I have a great one. I was once brought into a film company that was trying to start up. The head honchos decided for whatever reason that the only value I served the company was as a bargaining chip to get my dad's help with some investment stuff. Dad wasn't investing money, but he was still helping out in other ways. These guys totally jerked me around. They wasted a year of my life writing a script they had no intention of doing anything with. Took me on a business trip to Cannes to supposedly mentor me and dismissed me and ended up leaving me in a restaurant while I used the bathroom. They wasted my time for a year and a half, all because they thought I was a total idiot. They ended up funding another filmmaker's script later that summer, and the cow bombed to the tune of half a million dollars for a small town production and bankrupted the company. Meanwhile, I took the story I wrote and am currently using it to pay for my law school. Story 34. Backstory. At the time, I was a small 5, 4, 19-year-old girl. Working in a very male-dominant industry as a pastry chef, I went to culinary school in Napa Valley. There were two schools in the same city, mine, 13-month curriculum, max 18 students a year, $1.20K tuition, and the big brand name school, four-year degree, hundreds of students, $1.64K a semester. There was a minor rivalry between the schools because the head chef instructor that ran my school was, is married to one of the curriculum directors for the big school, and they love friendly competition. Anyway, my school had nine months of in-class and then four months of internship at a restaurant. I was lucky enough to be hired at a new restaurant opening in the middle of downtown Napa with chefs who have worked at some of the best restaurants in America. I gained a lot of experience and probably learned more in those four months than the rest of my education. I had managed to work my way to Chef du Partie, I was in charge of a section of the kitchen, and I also handled the commie, and working on the line. I was 19, just graduated culinary school, already through the first half of levels in a brigade system, and putting everything I had into gorgeous fine dining dishes I will forever be proud of. I worked my peach off in that kitchen, 10 plus hour days, 6 days a week. 
I loved it. We hire on a new commis, prep cook, who is in his third year at the big name culinary school. He was cool at first, but once he learned my age, he was about 24 at the time, and that I went to the smaller school, in his actual words, the poor people's cooking school, he started acting like a total banana to me. It's respectful to call those above you in a brigade system chef, and he instantly stopped calling me that, and instead called me a cutsy nickname I repeatedly asked him not to. He started talking to me like I was his annoying little sister trying to hang out with him and his friends. The executive chef put lamb shoulder on the menu, so that meant we had to start buying in and deepening lamb shoulders. I volunteered because I had done it before and I knew I was good at it, but so did the commis because he insisted I would mess it up. The exec let us both do it because the task would get done faster and left it at that. We got four shoulders in at a time and I would be done with my two before he barely got half done with his first. What the commis didn't know was that I and my other classmates were trained in butchery by one of the best artisan butchers in Napa County, and I was top of my class for it. I have broken down half pigs, quarters of beef, salmon, tuna, rabbit, snake, so many different proteins each with their own difficulties, and I am, oh, no good at it. I may be a pastry chef, but I know how to handle a knife. I'm not the best, but I absolutely am better than a 24-year-old rich kid who doesn't know how to convert ounces to grams. Doesn't make sense out of context, but metric is used in culinary because it's way I more accurate. It's something that should be taught first thing and is important to know before working in real restaurants. Story 35. I was in mock trial in high school and my role was for the sysadmin for a college's computer network. The case was for a cyberbullying incident. And as an expert witness, I had some freedom to speculate. We were up against a fine arts school the first round of the state tournament who were probably being graded on their performance and they were working on the assumption that I didn't know anything about computers. So when their lawyer tried to cross-examine me, he tried asking technical questions. The smug grin on his face vanished once I told him that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and their bench looked at each other with expressions that clearly said, He asterisk knew asterisk that! We still lost horribly, but making them look bad was worth it. Story 36 I had a math teacher who thought I was dumb because I never participated in class or did my homework. I can't blame her for that. Then I aced my first exam and she had a talk with me about cheating. I aced my second exam while she was staring at me, trying to catch me cheating. We had another talk about cheating. She put me in a separate room with another teacher during the third exam and I aced that too. We had another talk about cheating. After I aced the final, she told me she had no choice but to pass me, but that I'd never survive in the real world behaving this way. Anyway, I'm a mathematician now. And when I was visiting my hometown, I stopped by the school to give her copies of all my published papers. It was really satisfying to see the look on her face. Story 37. So, big company. I was on the testing team. The internet project that we had been working on for a couple of months had a deadline looming. The programmers, who have been working overtime for weeks, drop the code in our laps and we start testing. We break it. We found something that required huge chunks of code to be rewritten. The deadline is looming. Not good. They want all hands on deck to test when the programmers finally hand over the new, completely revised code. Test from front to back and twice in the middle. The timeline sort of went like this. Monday morning, the programmers drop the new, completely revised code into the testers' laps. It's estimated that it will take a week to test everything, and that included working the weekend. We attack it, try to break it, test it. Wednesday, we break it. In fact, I break it. I found a major bug that stops testing. Everyone recognizes it for what it is, a BFB big flipping bug. But we were too civilized to call it that. Nevertheless, because of the BFB, the deadline will be missed. Friday, the bigwigs call a huge meeting. From testers to programmers to project managers to their managers, everyone was there or on the call. 20 people in the room. Heads have to roll. They just have to figure out who's. At the beginning of the meeting, the top guy basically turns to me and asks me, personally, why didn't I find the BFB sooner? After all, I had had weeks. It was almost, who me? I only find the bugs, I don't create them. I was speechless. Normally, testers aren't blamed for finding bugs, and you certainly don't blame them for finding a BFB in new, completely revised code. Thank God more diplomatic heads prevailed. My team leader stepped up and calmly explained that I couldn't have found the BFB any earlier than that week, because asterisk, asterisk, it didn't exist until then. In fact, he said, I had found the BFB pretty quickly, all things considered. The top guy understands and turns his focus on the project designer who probably threw his own programmers under the bus. I was so stunned that I was targeted that I don't remember the rest of the meeting. Thus, I found out that no matter what you may think, the even top guys in a Fortune 50 company have no clue what is going on in their own projects. Story 38. Not me, but my partner. 
a couple of people on the team weren't pulling their weight and got called out by the boss. So they deny any fault and look for someone to take the hit. And since my partner is very easygoing, pleasant, and aloof, they assume that's the easy target. Well, boss calls up P to confirm, sharing what the other two had alleged. They had a laugh because, as it turns out, this had been happening fairly regularly unchecked. So before the company meeting, P stays up later than usual, click-clacking with a grin, simply saying the problem is fixed and goes to bed. Next morning at the team meeting, B brings up problem and directs attention to P, who affably obliges while the other two look nervously on. P explains that they solved the issue and begins showing the code which slowly reveals not only the error's true origins, but that by solving it, P had automated the other two's jobs entirely. Story 39. I was proud to say I earned the starting pitcher position on varsity baseball team my junior year of high school. I was the only lefty pitcher until one transferred to our school going into our junior year. He was cocky. Liked to throw junk curveballs at me all the time since the coach wanted the lefties to throw with each other. And he liked to run his mouth, inadvertently saying he would beat me out. He even made friends with the senior pitcher, who the team talked about being the starting varsity pitcher. Our first game, the senior pitcher started and gave up like four runs in the first inning. The coach pulled him after three innings and put in the new lefty. He gave up another run and kept walking people. Then the coach pulled him in the same inning when I came up. I finished the inning, no runs, held the other team to no runs the rest of the game, and even had a single and a double when I was up to bat. After that, that other lefty started being really nice to me going forward. Story 40. I deliver food products to various supermarkets. In this case, we will be discussing a pretty big supermarket chain. Something to know about this particular company and their management right off the bat. They don't communicate and they often make snap decisions without thinking things through. It's truly a culture of, take this display down because I feel like it. Anyway, recently I delivered an Easter-themed product and it sold well for the month that I had it on the shelf. Before Easter Sunday, I took the last few remaining boxes and took them off the shelf because stores don't want Easter product on the shelf after the holiday has passed dot dot common sense. I replaced the product with a spring-themed product that truly has nothing to do with Easter to anyone who would take two seconds to look at the box, which is on sale until the beginning of June, when springtime is over. I come into the store one Monday morning to find all of the spring-themed cake has been boxed up without my knowledge and put in the back. I quickly unbox it and put it back on the shelf because I knew some quick-to-act manager took it off the shelf because they thought it was an Easter product, even though the word Easter doesn't appear anywhere on the packaging. I end up bringing in 10 more cases so they will think twice about pulling this cow again because it would take a lot more work to take down a bunch of product and just knew I would get a call about it. Sure enough, three days goes by and I get a text from a store employee telling me that the manager wants this taken down with a picture of the My Springtime item with no explanation. I get the manager's number and give him a call and ask him what's up. Sure enough, in a cocky voice, he goes, Easter is over, dude. You can't have this product still up. Acting like I'm a moron for keeping Easter product on the shelf past the holiday, I say, read the box, dot, dot. It says nothing about Easter. After a long, silent pause, he goes, oh, yeah? I'll check the picture again and call you back. I wasn't surprised when he never called back. Probably embarrassed. The product stayed up and wasn't touched after that. They really tried to take $2,000 of my product off of the shelves without even reading the box and assuming it was Easter product because that is the culture at this store. Take it down, take this down, take that down, etc. So I clearly thought ahead and had all of the Easter-themed products off of the shelf before Easter Sunday and replaced them with spring-themed products because I'm not an idiot and have been doing this for 15 years. Manager ends up looking like an idiot because they can't take two seconds to read what is on a box before wanting thousands of dollars in merchandise taken off the shelf and losing sales for their store in the process. Story 41. Not really quite to the standard of a bunch of these responses, but I'm a waitress right now, back in the industry after years of a normal job. And people always assume I'm like a high school dropout with six kids and three boyfriends living in my car. It's ridiculously often that an old lady will tell me that I should really go back to school to get my degree. Or people will tell me I should look into schooling, or ask me what I'm planning on doing next, or something equally condescending and personal. And I always respond that I actually already have a college degree, spent the past several years working in a major city with a high-stress job, and got this job when I moved back to the area during COVID, and follow it with, I also love this job and now make comparable money for far less stress and obligation. Like, brew, this is my flipping job. Try not to be a total banana about it, yeah? Who else would bring you beers if not for people like me? That being said, serving tables is not an easy job, and people should respect restaurant workers, FOH and BOH, more. 
People don't go to a grocery store and drill the bag boy on why he isn't a doctor. I'm not sure why people think it's an appropriate conversation for someone who works in a restaurant. Restaurant people see a lot of cow tinnitus. Story 42. I was working in a kitchen on a line and some conversation was happening that prompted me to say the United States has the largest economy in the world. Maybe behind China. The whole line started roasting me. Everybody's laughing. People are joking about how much debt we're in. And it kind of shook me and terminated my confidence for a second. I immediately pull my phone out and say, hey, Google. Like an unpleasant person, I Googled that cow in front of everybody. And it was like the entire kitchen went quiet to hear the answer. USA, largest GDP, fudge you guys. I just went back to doing my thing trying to play it cool like you do. Small moment. But it was my moment. Story 43. I worked at a Trader Joe's. My particular store had the cases of water backstocked at the front of the store near the registers, meaning the whole supply we had was right there next to the registers. I unloaded the pallet that had all the water that morning so I knew what we had. So I'm training a new hire on cash register and a lady comes through and asks for a case of sport top water bottles. I let her know we sold out for the day because we didn't get any in this morning. She says, well, can you go check in the back for more? I let her know. I'm actually the one that unloaded the water today and we keep all of our cases of water bottles up here at the front so we can just grab them for customers. Since we don't have the sport top today, would you like a case of screw tops? She smirks at me and looks at the person I was training and says, can you go look in the back since he doesn't want to be helpful? So I tell them to just go and do it. Lo and behold, the new hire comes back and says to me, yeah. I asked our manager if we had any water back there and he told me, no, we keep all the water up front. I stopped scanning the lady's items looked her dead in the eye and asked, Oh, interesting, so it looks like I was right. So, would you like a case of screw tops? She just rolled her eyes, said no, and was silent for the rest of the transaction. Bad person. Story 44. Not sure it applies, but a co-worker recently found out I did HEMA and challenged me to a fist fight spar without protection because he thinks protection is dumb despite my warning. Gave him multiple opportunities to walk away, but he's persistent on doing it. Finally accepted and he wanted to do it on the parking lot under our workplace. What he didn't know is that I used to do Wing Chun and for a short period of time, boxing, judo, and karate. Guy made a fool of himself when he showed that he can't even kick properly and got completely beaten without me even needing to put up my guard. Even funnier is that he admitted to another co-worker that he didn't expect me to actually beat him because he used to do BJJ.